Hey guys, happy new year! Happy new year, happy, happy, happy new year. I cannot believe it's 2019. I'm so excited for this channel and for amazing content. I'm gonna be consistent this year and I'm excited to see where it could go. And I hope that you guys have like the best year and the best month, the best start to your year. And yeah, let's jump into this Foundation Friday. My hair, oh my gosh, my baby hairs. It's like one of those like, I don't care about my hair kind of days, you know? Hey guys, welcome back to Foundation Friday. Today I'm going to be reviewing the CoverGirl Outlast Stay Fabulous 3-in-1 Foundation. It retails for, well it depends, it depends where you get it. So it can go from $7.99 to $12.99, which is I believe the highest price point that you can get this foundation at, uh, which is a whopping $13. Uh, I think that is really expensive considering, like, I got this one at CVS and it was 13 bucks. Whereas at Walmart, you can get it for 8 It comes in 13 shades, which is quite a poor shade range. I was very disappointed when I saw that because I have used this foundation for quite a long time and I really do love it. Uh, they did change the packaging since I've last used it and purchased it. It had, like, it was more of a blue packaging and, like, blue something on it. Now it has like a red kind of thing on it, so we'll see. Maybe it's reformulated, I don't know. But 13 shades, that sucks. And it's mostly lighter to medium skin tones. There really isn't many deep skin tones. It comes with one fluid ounce, which is standard for most foundations. On the website it says, this is an all-in-one foundation with a long-lasting formula fuses primer, concealer, and foundation in one easy step. Smooth, blendable formula. Foundation that lasts all day long. Per usual, I'm gonna go ahead and do one side of my face with a brush, so I'm gonna do one pump on the back of my hand and see how far that goes. I only have moisturizer on my face, and that is it. That's like one layer, and I would say it is medium coverage, but on the second coat, it'll definitely be full coverage. I do feel like you have to kind of work quite fast with this foundation because it does set, it does dry down to a more like matte finish. I'm gonna do another pump and I'm gonna go on this side with a sponge. Yeah, this matches pretty well. Way more full coverage on this side than it is with the sponge. The sponge does soak up quite a bit of product, but I don't know. I kind of think I like the finish of it more with a sponge. It's great to go in with a brush first all over and then go in with a little bit more with a sponge, or at least that's how I like to apply because I always like the finish of a sponge. I just think it, I don't know, it does something magical. It just blends everything in so nicely and if you do have any excess product, it'll just kind of soak it up and pick it up. So that is kind of my preferred method uh, on a daily basis of how I apply my foundation. Areas that need a little more coverage, what I like to do, like I have, I don't know, this side of my face seems really bad. So I like to kind of apply it and then let it sit there for a minute. And that way the foundation sets ever so slightly and I'm able to get a little bit more coverage out of it. I have two thin layers of foundation on my skin and then I went in with a little more foundation and I just applied it on areas that need a little more coverage. The coverage is amazing, very buildable. It has a very nice matte finish, but it is a soft matte. It doesn't feel too dry or like too matte. It's not drying matte, but it is a matte finish, which I personally like because that means I don't really have to set it. Matte foundations just last a lot longer on the skin and don't like slip around. I personally prefer a soft matte finish because it lasts really beautifully throughout the day, even though a glowy kind of more radiant finish in a foundation is so beautiful it does tend to slip around throughout the day and I feel like you have to touch it up so I like this kind of finish because I can still touch over this if I needed to because I'm not really gonna set with a powder only my t-zone 
and very, very lightly. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of my makeup and I will be right back to show you guys what it looks like with everything else on top of it. So I finished off all of my makeup. I got dressed and I did my hair. Uh, I tried to do my hair, but this is just a quick check-in. It is looking a little bit like I would want to set with some Max Fix Plus at this point just because I did layer on so many, uh, so much like powder bronzer and I mostly use like powder highlight and all that kind of thing and so I do feel like I want to just mist my face. Overall it's looking really good. It's just looking a little bit like dry for my taste. I'm just going to zoom you guys in a little so you can see. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and head to work and I will do a little check-in in natural daylight to show you guys how it's looking. Right now it is 12 o'clock and I applied it at 10 o'clock so it's now been on for two hours. Hey guys, doing a little check-in. I'm in my bathroom at work. Um, this is awful lighting honestly, but this is what it's looking like. The only thing that I see is the creasing around my nose right here and then also it's getting way dewier you can see like my forehead which I really like pretty good and it's been 10 hours 10 hours Hey guys, I'm about to jump in the shower, so I thought I would do like one last little update. It has been 13 hours since my foundation has been on, and it is looking really good considering I've had a crazy day, and I didn't touch up at all. I actually just blotted around my nose and my T-zone just to get rid of a little bit of oils, but I used no powder, nothing like that. It is very long wearing, it's very buildable, it's medium to full coverage and I freaking love it so that is all that I have to say about it I love this foundation and I have used it for such a long long time so yeah okay bye